hundred years ago, we had a lot of problems trying to treat infectious diseases. We didn't understand the nature of the problem, and we didn't have the right tools to intervene and fix patients who had infections. Now we know that we can actually use the body's own immune system to help treat infections. We can even use the ability of the immune system to learn to teach the body about problems it's never encountered before. You can get a vaccine against polio, and when polio comes along, the immune system has been changed in a way that's going to prevent you from ever having that problem. With the brain, it's a little bit harder problem. We've been focusing up until now on two different kinds of solutions. One is take a pill. Take a drug. The problem with that is any drug you take is going to activate all the neurons in your brain. It's going to be activating for a long period of time. And for many of the neurological disorders we want to treat, drugs just don't seem to be very effective, or the side effects are worse than the treatment. Another approach that we have is to do a surgery. Go in and remove a part of the brain that's acting badly. But again, the restriction there is you have to have a very severe invasive surgery, and you're only going to be able to treat things of a particular scale. What we've developed is a new way to intervene and treat neurological disorders. The approach we're going to use is like what we've done with vaccinations. Use the system's ability to change itself. The way the immune system works is an injection of foreign proteins. The way the brain learns is very different from that. What we're going to have in the brain is a combination of inputs arriving from the world and my motivation, how much I care about the information that I'm receiving. From the brain's point of view, that interest is actually going to be the release of neurotransmitters, molecules into the brain, like acetylcholine and norepinephrine. We've developed a new way to deliver that motivation by stimulating a nerve in the neck called the vagus nerve. When we stimulate the vagus nerve during a particular experience, people remember it better. And the reason they remember it better is because the brain itself has been changed. We now have found that we can actually use this new method of rewiring the brain in a very specific and long-lasting way to treat neurological disease. For conditions like tinnitus, which is the ongoing perception of sound where there isn't any sound, we think we can intervene, eliminate that bad wiring, and eliminate the disorder of tinnitus for some very long period of time. The way we're going to do that is by trying to make the active tone shrink. Other approaches have tried to mask the stimulus, have loud sounds that are going to cover it up, make it go away by hiding it. But the underlying problem is still there. In our treatment, the idea is the region of the brain that's overactive will be shrunk by activating other sounds different from the tinnitus sound, and then telling the brain, learn these other things, we can actually make the region of the brain that responds to the tinnitus frequency go away.